Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode and I'm very excited to have with me Miss Miyuri Dehapate, and she is the MES engineer at E Technologies Group. So, welcome, Miyuri. Hey, Chris. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the opportunity for this. I, I feel elated. Well, I'm excited to have you. Now, where exactly are you located out of again? So, I am currently located in Toronto, okay. uh, Canada. All right, all right, Toronto. I've never been there. I got to go there someday. A big, uh, big hockey city, huh? Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love these conversations, Mariri, and we get to talk to our heroes, and you're definitely one of them. So maybe get us started. Tell us a little bit about your journey to where you're at now. Yep, sure, sure. Uh, so I was born and raised in India. Um, this is a uh, there's a city called Pune in India. So many people know Mumbai. It's a couple of hours drive from there. Okay. Uh, and I completed all of my education in my home city. Um, and I once I graduated from college, uh, I joined this company uh, called Tata Consultancy Services. Um, and I was with them for about uh, six years, a start of my career. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when I got a chance to move from India uh, to the United States. Uh, I was in the United States for about uh, six and a half years. Uh, I used to be, I used to live in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, And then recently uh, my husband got a transfer. So I requested for a transfer and then here we are in Toronto. (laughs) Uh, So uh, in in, in between, uh, I worked for six years with TCS, uh, the Startup Consultancy Services. Uh, And then I moved on to my current company, E-Technologies Group. Uh, and I have been with them for about, uh, it would be five years, I guess, complete. this year, yeah, it would be five years okay. with the company. Um, and I have been an MES engineer throughout, uh, but definitely uh, moving from a level one MES engineer uh, to an MES uh, consultant, which I am right now. So uh, it's kind of a techno-functional role, MES engineer. Yeah. Now, so e-technologies group, what what exactly do you guys do at the end of the day? So e-technologies group is a system integrator. The main uh, work that e-technologies group does is uh, providing uh, system integration softwares uh, to the shop floor, uh, to all the sites uh, that use different uh, industrial uh, industrial automation solutions. Uh, and then MES is also a part of uh, those solutions that e- uh, e-technologies group provides. And that, that's where my role comes into picture. Very cool. Very cool. Now, you've, you've been serving industry in a lot of different ways. I am curious from, from your standpoint as an MES engineer, what are some of the challenges that you're seeing out there right now that, that's, that's the, the biggest that's impacting industry in general? Now that I see the, the the biggest challenge to the industry right now is data security. Mm. We are all moving to cloud-based systems. Everything, every data, everything about you, about your company, about whatever you do or whatever happens even at the industrial level, everything is stored on cloud. And the biggest challenge is data security. So if there is any breach, all of that information is going to someone that shouldn't have that information. Right. So I think that's one of the biggest challenges right now uh, to the industry. No doubt. We, we're, we're hearing that across the board, aren't we? All these, these different uh, types of companies, industrial companies being targeted, the impact that it's having. And we live in the Southeast and that uh, the, the gas pipeline, when that got impacted, you know, from a data security standpoint, you know, I couldn't get gas for a few days. That was, that was, that really impacted me personally. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it, it impacts everyone. Like I said, even down to the individual level, it impacts everyone. Yeah. Now we, yeah. we, we love these hero conversations because for one, one thing, Mary, they, they give people inspiration and gives them a, a different thought on a path they could take. So maybe speak to the young person out there or the person that wants to make a, a career shift. Maybe they want to go down this MES engineer path. What advice would you give them? So I would say never stop learning uh, because whatever, like like it comes with all the technologies, the technologies keep evolving. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have to be 
you have to evolve and adapt to those new technologies. Uh, so just keep learning, um, get some certifications that uh, for the new technologies in the market, or uh, just you know connect with your colleagues over what new uh, technologies or emerging trends uh, that that they are working on, and try to get some more insight. Uh, just try to be in the know. Right. Yeah. Great. Great advice. If you because once you stop learning, you're you're not moving forward at that point. Right. Yeah. Just just get get out of your comfort zone and especially uh, with everything that's happening right now moving on to cloud mobility it's so much uh, one can get easily overwhelmed mm -hmm. uh, but just you know being in the know would just keep everything streamlined no doubt no doubt now i am curious uh, throughout your career have you had people that have been able to mentor you? Have you had a chance to mentor others? Just, just like to give you that opportunity to talk about mentors in general and how that's impacted you. For me personally, I would say my biggest mentor is my dad. Uh, my dad is also a part-time career counselor. Oh. Uh, so he does help a lot of people uh, decide what they want to do in their career path. And I have seen him uh, doing that since I was a kid. Uh, so, you know, he has been my, my biggest driving force to just keep learning all the time. And I have seen, seen him learning even till the age of 60. So, you uh, know, he's, he's, he's been a big, big inspiration for me. Um, definitely one of the first mentors I would say I had in my life. And then when I moved to AE Technologies Group, um, I got two really great mentors. Uh, so Alan Maxwell and Ralph Dixon. Uh, who have been my managers over the last uh, five years. Um, and the way they gave me flexibility to learn and apply whatever I'm learning uh, throughout my career has really made me a more confident person. Uh, I don't think if I was that confident, I, I would be you know, able to say what I'm saying today in front of a camera. So uh, that really has helped me uh, in overall know, using the using my skills uh, to next level, even to get more business from customer. Very. So good. I would like to thank them. Hey, that's that's wonderful. I mean, it's, it's just the fact that you have a couple of people at your current company that are willing to invest time in you and to really help help you in your career in advance. That that's outstanding. Yeah, and when you mentioned um, about experience of being a mentor, mm -hmm. uh, yes, I I have had that experience a couple of times. So I, I don't know if I still am at that level that I could be someone's mentor. Uh, but I I have coached a few people, uh, especially um, with MES, like um, you know, getting them up to speed what MES is, how they can utilize MES. Uh, so I've had a few learning sessions conducted, so I, I hope just I can take this journey to, to a point that I can actually mentor someone and make a difference in their life. Oh, you are, you're doing it right now. I mean, it's, this is, <laughs> you're, you're, you're making an impact for sure. You know, and, and some people too, Mary, when they think about, you know, MES or engineering in general, they, they have this mindset, right? And it's not always correct. So if there's, is there anything that you'd like to, to uh, debunk around what you do and where people may think it's down this path, but you know, it's, this is not reality. Here's what, here's what reality is. So giving you a platform right here, anything you'd like to, to, to jump on here? Um, I think the, the biggest myth that I would like to debunk is you learn everything uh, in college, in engineering. You learn everything, you learn all the skills and you're good to go and you know start earning. That's, that's the biggest myth and I have experienced it. So whatever you learn in college definitely helps you improve your analytical skills, um, your thinking capability and to apply those technologies or uh, you know, whatever skills you've learned in college. I would say that whatever you learn in college, you apply that when you're on your career path. Uh, but even during your career path, you need to keep learning and evolving. So it just the learning and uh, getting those skills doesn't stop when you graduate. It just starts at that point, I feel. Mm -hmm. So I, I would just say keep an open mind uh, when you're on your career path. Just look out for what you're interested in or just look out for where you can grow um, and just, you know, have that will to learn. Yeah, for sure. 
Now, I'm curious, you know, when you're the happiest at work and things are going well and you're, you come home happy and uh, you just have that, you know, I, I had a really good day. What, what were you doing that day? When do you get that fulfillment? I get that fulfillment when I know that the work assigned to me has been completed 100% to the satisfaction level that I have set it to. So that I, I just know that I have given my 105%. In completing that, uh, at least from my end, mm-hmm. uh, and also when you know your work gets appreciated or you know, you know it gets identified that it has helped someone in the long run. Like for example, uh, there could be production issues at the site, and uh, people come running asking for help because they know that if that issue doesn't get resolved, it's just going to cost a lot of dollars mm-hmm. uh, in the long run. Uh, and if I help them and that issue gets resolved and the smile that I see on their faces, that just makes my day. So I just know that I've helped someone and it has really impacted someone's life. So that that just makes me very happy. No doubt. No doubt. Now, we've we've, we've had a fun time getting to know you at work. Now, let's let's talk about stuff you outside of work, Mary. So what what are some hobbies that you have? What do you enjoy doing for fun? So. Growing up, I was a very artistic person. So I've had a whole lot of hobbies over uh, okay. over the last few years, I mean, over, over my entire lifetime. But currently, the one that I'm sticking to is blogging. So okay. I like to blog. I like journaling. I like writing. Um, so I do have a travel blog that I write, um, just share, share on my travel, my experiences. Um, then I also have a home decor blog where I just share what I do decorating my home and stuff that's that's just uh, that occupies the other part of my day when I'm not working and and just re- just really helps me de-stress and relax there you go now is that maybe we can you can share that that blog link with us and we can let our listeners check it out yeah sure sure I will awesome awesome so you like blogging you you like doing some traveling how about family what what can what would you like to share with us about your family so, uh, like I said, I was born and brought up in India. So my family is back home in India, uh, especially my parents, uh, my brother, my sister-in-law, and my nephew. Uh, they're back home in India, uh, but I'm married, and um, me and my husband, uh, we both stay here in Toronto. So um, I have one brother, like I mentioned, uh, and I have a five, six-year-old nephew, whom I, I terribly miss because I haven't seen him in a while. I bet. Uh, yeah, so that's and then um, my in-laws uh, are they they also uh, stay in India, so okay. I just get to meet them probably once a year. Uh, but it has been longer this time due to COVID, so I just yeah. hope I get to meet them soon. I was going to ask you how often do you get to go home to India? So uh, I try to go every year, uh, but I haven't been. So it's been two years that I wasn't able to go due to COVID. Okay. I'm hoping things improve this year and I get to see them again. Yeah. Uh, they they did visit us in the U.S. when we were in the U.S. So at least I'm glad that they could visit us at that time because I wasn't able to go and visit them. Right. So are there any podcasts out there or YouTube channels, books? Just what do you enjoy consuming that you think people may enjoy themselves? And this could be stuff for just personal or professional uh, all across the board. Anything jump out? Yeah, so I love reading. Um, That's one of the things that I try to make time for. Uh, I love reading books, uh, especially self-help books. Uh, So some of the self-help books that I've I've, uh, read in the past are uh, Ikigai. Uh, I don't remember the full name, but it's called Ikigai, The Japanese Art of Living a Long and Happy Life. Uh, that was a really good book. It just, um, you know, tells you how to be grateful for the life you have and how to stay happy. Uh, and then there's another book called, called um, Good Vibes, Good Life uh, by Vex King. That's another a feel-good book, just tells you uh, how to be grateful in life, how to how to live your life and uh, just aim for more. Um, and then uh, there, there's another book, The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. So that's one of the books that, that really has impacted how you should uh, think in a direction in which you can achieve the dreams that you've set 
uh, your goal to. So that that's some of the books I would recommend reading. Um, Very and cool. So, and we'll we'll put links to those books in our show notes for the listeners as well. So thank you for sharing those. And we've we started doing a lightning round where we just have a bunch of random silly questions, and it just lets our listeners get to know you. So are you willing to put to to play, Mirari? Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, let's let's jump in. So, what's your favorite food? Indian. Indian food. How about adult beverage? Mm, sangria. A sangria. All right, all right. So, what's on your nightstand right now? Uh, my skincare. Okay. Products. All right. Skincare products. What's uh, an app you can't live without? Instagram. Instagram. Oh, okay, okay. We we'll have to. Put your Instagram uh, link there on, in our show notes so people can follow you. <laughs> How about <laughs> that's a, where I do most of my travel blogging. So okay, very cool, very cool. How about a a guilty pleasure? Mm, indulging in fried food. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> How about uh, all time favorite movie? That's a that's a difficult one. I don't even remember which movie I watched last. <laughs> we'll, we'll move, we can move on. Okay. How about uh, favorite music? Uh, favorite music. I used to love rock when I was in college, uh, but now I'm more into pop and uh, definitely Bollywood music, Indian okay. music. Where is somewhere that you've never been, but you got to go one day? Bora Bora. Okay. Now, where is the most outstanding place that you have been? Hawaii. Ooh, which island? Uh, Maui and uh, Oahu both. All right. But I, I, I need to go to the other two, the yeah. big island and Hawaii. Right, for sure. Yep. I've only been to Maui, but got to go back. Mm -hmm. So nice. Yeah, we just went there recently. So uh, that was a really amazing trip where there was tons of things to do and, you know, Everyone has everyone has something to do there. Mm -hmm. Did you see the uh, the sunrise at the top of the volcano? Yeah, Haleakala. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Huh? Last one: dogs or cats? Dogs. All right, you got it right. You got it right. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun lightning round. So you know, this is we call it Eco S Y. We always wrap up with the why. So if, if somebody was to walk up to you, Mary, and wants to know what your personal why is, what would that be? So being 100% productive is what I aim at. Uh, some days, of course, are not 100% productive, but just getting up in the morning and knowing that I'm going to have a productive day, uh, I'm going to help someone, I'm going to help myself, mm -hmm. uh, just makes me have, happy, even if it means just decluttering a, a closet or just cleaning something it just gives me uh, you know that peace of mind that I've done something productive right. so I just cannot sit and mindlessly I do that sometimes I, I, I am guilty of doing that just mindlessly scrolling and not doing anything right. but I try to avoid things like that so just being driven uh, and being 100% productive is is what no, I would say my personal why is, um, and again, like I said, I've seen my my mom and my dad do it all their life. Um, my mom was a working mother uh, with two kids, and now I just cannot imagine. I I can feel it now how she used to feel back then, handling everything, handling work, handling mm -hmm. household chores, children. So it's just you know I can relate to those things and that just keeps me driven all the time. So I just want to achieve at least 50% of what they have achieved. Well, you know that you, you definitely will. And this has been just a wonderful conversation, getting to know you, one of our heroes. And for our listeners out there, check out the show notes for sure. Definitely now that we know uh, her blogs on Instagram, got to got to see where, she, where Mary is traveling. But thank you so much for taking the time with us on EcoSY. Well, I really enjoyed the time with you today. Yeah. Thank you so much for this opp opportunity. I enjoyed it too. Um, oh, it was a great conversation. I hope you thank you. And I th hope you have a great day. Thank you. You too. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to Eco Why. 
This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.